keep him there. Good morning. Hi, good morning, people. <laughs> How you doing? How many years have we been training together? Boy, I'd say a good best part of three, four years. Easy. Four years. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. How long has Mazmas TV been going on for? Boy, as long as I've known you, Carl. <laughs> I've been there from the start, and I'm going to be there. I'm going to be the last man on the ship. No, fuck for real. Definitely. About time. I thought it has to be about time. We train here very it's regularly. Been long overdue, bro. Very much so. So let's get been this. Let's get this party started. You know, what um, makes BVK special? And we're a family, man. I mean, well, this is what we do. We sit down, we chill, we enjoy each other's company, and we train dogs. You know, there's no egos here, no agendas. We just get on and do what we got to do, really. Um, it's just a family. That's the best word I can use to describe the club. 100 family, yeah. 100 percent Definitely family. Um, saying that, if anyone's interested in coming down and joining the family, hit me up, inbox, um, yeah, and we get you booked in. Lovely. Definitely. Yeah, so um, basically this is uh, Armour, uh, Garvey, MV son. Uh, we're just doing a bit of civil agitation just to bring um, a bit more confidence out in the dog, you know. Not so much focus on equipment. See, actually, actually a bit suspicious. Good. So we wait until the dog reaches up its height. We gauge the dog, we gauge the level of aggression. When it's really high, it actually runs off and builds confidence within the dog. Lad. What's civil agitation? What makes uh, it different to normal agitation? Civil agitation to me is 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 a way for me to really see and teach the dog uh, basically the man is the target. Not necessarily equipment, not necessarily sleeve, literally man versus dog. You know, uh, I, I tend to do a lot of civil agitation with personal protection dogs, um, not so much sport dogs. Um, sport can have a bit of as you can see, uh, he's just trying to, if you go in this time, Ash, go in a little bit more passive. Help him if he needs it more, yeah? Ash, going to go with nice and calm. I'm not threatening at all. This is the behaviour we want. This is the, this is the behaviour we want. This is the response we want. Ash is not doing nothing. The dog's been told to, told to guard. And he's guarding. Like, if you can, walk in on him, Ash. Yeah, so um, we do it once more. Try and bring him up as high as possible. Ash, okay. Like I said, it's more of an exercise just to uh, cue the dog, just to teach the dog that the man is a target for personal protection. You think about it. On the street, no one's really going to come at you with equipment. They're not going to come at you with a whip sleeve, or a back sleeve, or a You want to see really nice forward aggression with intent. Bring him up nice and high. That's nice. Hello, Ash. How are you, mate? You alright? How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Good to see you. Lovely work. Thank you very much. What do you do? Um, sorry if I'm out of breath, people. Uh, yeah. Uh, with puppies, um, I just try, where a lot of people build uh, with puppies, they try and make puppies stronger. Yeah, definitely. That application should be used all the time, especially with young dogs. But I like to, um, early, I like to expose holes, yeah. weaknesses. It gives me something to do. I almost want a puppy with um, not too many, but a few flaws. Yeah. It gives me a better indication of what direction to go in. It also gives me um, some form of direction with regards to the breeding, with why I bred it or somebody else bred it. Um, 
I like to expose, um, I like to condition. I don't necessarily do different training for pups uh, as regard to what I do for adults. Um, I just water it down, same concept, same picture, just less, less busy. The older the dog, the more busy the picture, but the picture's exactly the same, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the puppy learns. Every time it, it reaches adulthood or young adulthood, whatever the case may be, it sees the picture. It's been seeing it from six, seven weeks old. So um, it's not really an issue for the dog. Um, this dog here, Hazard, uh, young puppy, uh, how old is Hazard now? 13, 14 weeks. 13, 14 weeks. I think maybe 13. Yeah. He, he, um, maybe out of drive, he's sound. Nice puppy, environmentally sound. Um, we're just conditioning him to different stimuli uh, in, in the form of bite work, grip work. Um, as you can see, we're using the rattle bottle. Uh, the rattle is a uh, practically. I use the rattle, I'm not sure what other people use, but I use the rattle myself for um, stim yeah. to bring the dog in to drive, to kick the dog in to drive. So when it hears a stone shaking in the bottle, it's stim. So when it hears other noise, which in older, um, older, uh, how can I say, later on in life, uh, I'll then change it to the rattle stick. I'll then change from the rattle stick to the whip. So it's not uh, alien to hearing different high pitched sounds in the background while it's working. Um, like I said, it's just about painting the picture, but with different colours, if that makes sense. So you expose the dog from early to everything? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 a lot of people don't agree with it, but I start training from when a puppy can walk, see and hear, I start training. Show them everything. Yeah, it makes sense. Why, why, a lot of people, and I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying yeah. my way's right and their way's wrong or vice versa, but a lot of people, um, they like to wait until the puppy's mature. Yeah. But that's vital time you're missing out on. Can't really wait in my eyes, it doesn't make sense waiting. You expose as early as possible, and it gives yourself a bigger window to try and address issues if you have any. If you don't have any issues, it gives yourself a bigger window to make the dog more stronger within these areas. So, um, horses for courses, really, but I like to start as early as possible. Um, I've got a puppy that I just bought not too long ago, a couple of days ago, uh, from Grain O'Reilly. Shout out to Grain, um, seven weeks old. She was with me half a night and she started training the next day and I'm not going to go easy on her. I've told Graham I'm going to go hard. I need to see what the puppy has and what it hasn't got. So, um, yeah, I like to test Do you think it matters then, that, for you anyway, particularly because you breed as well, yeah. you're not just, uh, you don't just train for the sake of, let's say, sport only or uh, just to provide protection dogs or whatever, you, you, you also breed. So for you, you see it from a different angle. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, uh, from a breed, from a breeder's point of view, or from a breeder's perspective, uh, even more so, testing needs to be done. It needs to be done vigorously. It needs to be done consistently, um, because then it gives you a sense of direction whether your breeding program is going in the right direction or not. Um, pedigree, BRNs, blah blah blah. It's nice, but I always like to look at the dog in front of me, yeah. and the two dogs behind the dog that's in front of me. I don't really tend to go further than that. It's nice if you're trying to find out. History on the lineage and so forth, but for me as a breeder, uh, sire, dam, and what's in front of me, stud dog, or whether it be the breeding bitch, and then I go from there. Um, I like to test hard. There's one of our pups here with Chloe now. Juice from our band of breeding. Are we going to bring him out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready to do some stuff with him? Okay, yeah, I'll do some work. What we're going to do with Juice today is um, we're going to do some. Uh, some canister work. Juice is going to be trialing, he's going to be a trial dog when he gets older. Um, Chloe likes the trialing scene, I like the trialing scene. Um, personal protection, family protection dog. Um, but now what we're going to be doing today is some conditioning. Um, a bit of conditioning to canisters, a bit of conditioning to noise. I mean, just want him to work consistently through whatever's thrown at him. So yeah, we'll give it a shot. Let's go. So like I said, we're all on the scene. Nice. Um, direct drive, regardless of what's going on, you don't really want to see anything bother the dog. Oh, I do.
have a consistent bite. Regardless of the Target. Focus on the target, the job at hand. Good boy, dude. Which this time round, good fighting. Yes, good boy. So as you can see, what we were trying to do is um, just keep the dog focused on the bite, stay on the bite, regardless of what's going on. No matter what I'm doing, your job is to bite the leg, stay on the leg, keep countering. Um, we will drill this continuously throughout this dog's lifetime. Um, in theory, it may work, it may not. Um, when it comes to trial, when we send the dog to engage a decoy, it locks onto target regardless of what's happening. It's going target and it's going to get target, ideally. Legs, do you start with legs or do you start with bicep? Do you start with forearm? If you're doing trials, you mentioned trials, you mentioned this pup is pretty much going to be personal protection and trials. Mm -hmm. Where do you start with, it doesn't matter, or do you do a mix of um, uh, with, with pups, I tend to transition is uh, rag, pad, um, once we move from pad, I tend to go legs. Legs is on the puppy's plane level field. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's easier for the dog to engage in legs. Saying that, while the dog's on legs, or while the puppy's on legs, sorry, we will then give stim upper body to see if the dog wants to stay legs or if it wants to come up. Then, once the dog, dare I say, has mastered legs, uh, we would then put the puppy on the table. Yeah. which we can do some table work shortly. Um, once again, the table is there to help the puppy, but at the same time, the puppy doesn't realise I'm actually taking you out of your comfort zone. But we want drive to bring the puppy through that, regardless of where I am, on top of a car, on top of a table. <sighs> bite works, bite work, yeah? So um, basically, put the puppy on the table. The puppy, all four are on the ground. Let me teach bicep. Once the bicep application has been applied, take the puppy off the table, then the puppy will then become accustomed to working on its back two legs. Um, this tends to throw a lot of dogs. A lot of people tend to go into this straight away. Uh, for us, we don't. We want the dog to understand biting first and foremost, and then the the external pressures come after. Yeah. So we apply it as the training goes along. Now, now we just want direct. He knows what's coming. He knows the job at hand. Once again, we're going to give a little bit of skin before him. Not too much. As you can see, we're following us. When you get up there, Rush, before you give him the bite, just throw your, your right arm, whatever. Give him a few misses. Nothing too crazy. So right now, Rush, you're going to see that you've got to give him a little bit of skin. And you give him a nice, easy presentation and you just do some easy grips. Got his dad's biting style. <laughs> oh. Angry biter. So you see, Ashley is, is at the same time on each counter. He's conditioning him to work. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Couple more counters. Oh yeah.
Cowboy Plus. Who oh, knows a baby? I just wanted to stay focused. I'm gonna jump out This is just getting accustomed to biting different materials, different feel in our mouth. We just want the same result. Would you work a dog differently depending <coughs> on its breed? Uh, or is it all the same? Not necessarily. Um, you, you, once you understand puppies' drives, dogs' drives, you apply according to the dog in front of you. I wouldn't necessarily say breed specific. Sometimes, if you come across hurdles, then you may have to rely on the breed. Some dogs may work stronger in defense, some in prey. Um, it all depends. I don't have a, how can I say, a blanket of training. Yeah. I apply training to the dog in front of me, regardless of breed, age. The dog will tell me what it's ready for and what it's not ready for, and then I'll apply accordingly. So yeah, breed specific, um, it can help. But a lot of the time, uh, it can cause you problems as well. Yeah, this is um, <coughs> another area of bull vision, what we do. We source and supply and match families with personal protection dogs, uh, family protection dogs. This is Max, who's currently in training now. Um, just shy of two years old, German Shepherd, Casey registered. Uh, what we've actually done is, what we do, we place our dogs out into family homes. Uh, this dog is destined to be a family pers person protection dog. So we've placed it with Abby here, who's uh, one of the team, member of the team. Basically what Abby does, she'll take the dog out on day-to-day -day, uh, activities, on the train, high streets, basic obedience. So what we're doing now is a bit of a bit of basic bull drive, getting the dog nice and calm, teaching it to be fine. I mean, this dog's used to this training ground uh, in terms of bite work and stuff like that. So it's good to pull it out of the van and not allow it to do any bite work, keep it nice and calm, keep it stable. Um, really nice female uh, by the name of Maya uh, just starting out her um, training um, Ashley's just applying some foundation spray with a bit of work to stimulate the dog really high get it engaged into the work and then reward with a really nice calm back this is a good question for you people always talk about green dogs would you say then this is a green dog and yeah. what is the definition of a green dog green dog is a for me it could be different for other people but for me a green dog is a dog that's had uh, probably hardly no training has got all the right uh how can i say is wired the right way um in terms of work um, but training that it's experience is very minimal literally none so as you can see what they're doing now they're working the counter keeping a nice and calm on the bike but maintaining a full deep grip really nice pitch break out to break break out to break Ash watches on the bike and then lock up when you're ready when you say you take any influence from sports or what kind of influences do you think sports have given you 
for your type of work because you're not quote unquote sport. No, for Man. me, um, I really, 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 and to make come as a shock to some people, I really like uh, IPO uh, foundation work. Um, yes. tend to come across dogs that have had foundation IPO training uh, for me to apply my style of work it's it's easier I should say um, the dog understands right from wrong um, it understands hold on it understands buy it for you know it's very clear that there's a lot of clarity um, I, I really respect the discipline for IPO um, it's not something that I've done myself but I, I really appreciate the work that the guys put in with regards to IPO work um, saying that, uh, believe it or not, this dog has been bred from IPO lines. As we were saying here, we try and get the bar. Create a bit of distance. So literally what you was just doing then, but just with a bit more distance, you'll get a bar. We're just going to do a scenario. You're going to keep the dog beside you, yeah? So literally beside you, yeah? Like that, you stand there, Ash is gonna walk in towards you. Yeah, so he's gonna talk to you. Yeah, if the dog barks, no problem. Yeah, let him bark. Conversation's gonna get a bit heated. Yeah, when the conversation gets a bit heated, Ash is gonna attack you. It's up to him when he wants to attack you. Yeah, once the dog engages, you control Ash. Yeah, so remember, keep tension on the line. Yeah, give him a few while he's on the floor or wherever. Ash may try and grab you. Ash has got a freestyle with this, I'm just letting him go with it. Yeah. It's just to test you, but at the same time, we're still going with that personal protection, street ready stuff, yeah? Tension on that line. That's it. Let the dog work now. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Yeah, keep him nice and calm. Good boy. Keep kicking him. Get him off. Good boy. Get him off. Actually, don't get paid enough for this shit. No, no, definitely not. Actually, there's none of this shit in IPO, buddy. Come to the dark side. Keep tension on that line, Ross. Keep tension. Keep talking to him, yeah? Get him off! There you go. Yes! Good boy. Watch him. Good lad. Good. Hold him, boy. Good lad. Get him up. Hold him, boy. Get him up. Hold him. Good. Get behind the dog, Ross. It looks like you're getting ready for something. Just getting ready for uh, Benson. Season trial. If you're in the UK and you're trialing. You don't know that dog, then you don't know any dog. You really competed at that level, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah basically what we're trying to do, we're just trying to tidy up the work. Benson knows fight, um, he knows pressure at a very high level. So what we're trying to do is um, give him a bit of pressure, not too much, just enough. Send him a little bit crazy. But then what we want to do, we want to be able to, or me and the handler are working, which is Ryan, working together at trying and regaining control straight after the madness. So, um, yeah, you might see a, uh, uh, a clean out after some pressure. Whoa, whoa. Maybe.
Benson, out! Here! Benson. Damn, boy. Right, we'll be doing uh, working with Alex uh, and his young dog, uh, Reggie. Uh, what we're doing is um, taking Reggie down the, the, the avenue of trialing. Uh, Reggie is a typical bull breed. He wants to go where the fight is. So basically what we're teaching him to do, we're teaching him to target, ignore canisters, ignore the added distractions as you can see actually giving him here. Good boy, Reggie. Good boy, the distraction of the where the fight is. This is canisters. We want him to go straight for us. This is better. Teaching him to ignore the kind of stuff. Once again, the man is the target. The man is the end game. Apply the pressure. When the dog counts through the pressure, it'll open up again. Wait. Right. See the pressure oh, for yes. the dog. He counts, he wins. And again. And again, eh? Some stress is there. The dog knows the stress. Oh, oh yes. Yes. He wins. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The added pressure of canisters or bottles or sticks. Whatever the case may be, it's just be totally irrelevant. What I'm about to do, a lot of people uh, in the protection world, they frown upon. Um, I've had some stick over it before in the past. Um, but I feel personally, I mean, I've been doing this now well over 20 years. If you know how to apply work, um, it's not really an issue. Um, I'll touch on that a bit more. I'm about to work this beautiful specimen here, bred by us. Gorilla. <laughs> oh, me. Um, <laughs> a lot of people feel that if you work your own dog, if the dog becomes in a stressed, uncomfortable state, it will turn on you. It's never happened since I've trained this dog uh, from birth with regards to protection and bite work. And uh, it's never gone from me once. Yet. And it's, this dog has taken a lot of pressure. Um, so what we're going to do now is a nice calm grip session. Work the counters. It's just a little... Um, a little blower. What makes a good dog spot? For me, he's biting. First and foremost, that. It's a nice, clear, level dog. Um, dog that understands right from wrong. Very clear in the head. I mean, later on, I'll probably give this dog two and let it out to go to the toilet. It's very, very level. He understands right now. There's no threat. This is just a little thing that we go through occasionally. We're going to do this one thing about the dog sport or dog training industry or the whatever, you know, the, the kind of dog world. What would it be? Uh, just be for people to work together. Uh, if, especially in the UK. Good boy. People work together a lot better. Good boy. They work together. Then uh, I think we get a lot more done in this country. Hell of a lot more. You know, we'll achieve a lot more. Reading programs will be better. Trials will be better. There won't be so much confidence. Good boy. So more, more. To summarise, more unity. Always good unity, man. Always good. You never have enough. Yeah. I'm going to talk about Ashley for a second. I think Ashley doesn't get enough credit. Definitely not. How many years has he been working dogs with you? Probably coming up to our first year. First year in May. I remember the first time you took a bite. I actually remember that. Do you remember the first time? Yeah, first time yeah, on the field. That. With we Gorilla, yeah. So... 
the journey. How do you teach someone to become a decoy? Because he's now. Um, you've just got to basically. Uh, I don't mean to put. I don't mean to put anybody off, but you've got to really want to do this job. Yeah, you have to really want, as sinister as it sounds, to get bitten by dogs. It's hard to smile. <laughs> Look at no, 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 no. Actually, smile. Look at actually smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not something that everybody wants to do um, and then once you get past the, the first hurdle of wanting to get bitten is how long how long it takes before you think this isn't really for me do you have the lasting power do you have the commitment you know and um, a few people have come along the way and uh, I've helped them out and, I, and I've taught them a few things, but they've, they've, they, they weren't in it for the long run. Um, Ashley's proved himself time and time again. And now, as you can see, he's a seasoned decoy. He enjoys getting bitten. He actually, in a weird way, enjoys getting hurt. I don't, don't ask me why. A bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you confirm or deny that? <laughs> <laughs> confirm. <laughs> I get a rush. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see. Unless you know you're alive. <laughs> As you can see on some of our videos, um, he's the, uh, the nominated person for the live box. Green light as well. He's a green light guy. Yeah, Jesus. Thumbs up, mate. It's all part of the party. That's right. Little brother to a gorilla. Good boy. Same breeding. Come out the same stomach at the same time. They bite now. Similar. Gorillas bite. It's still more advanced. Gorillas still learn. Bison still learn. Sorry. But their work ethic yeah. is completely different. Good boy. Good boy. Gorilla had a lot more of a solid foundation which I think then determines oh, yeah. the end game for the dog. <laughs> the ball. Yes! Get him, 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 Mrs. BVK. What's it like working with uh, Mr. BVK? A joy. A joy. A joy. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> We're decoying. What's it like learning from Scott? Do you know what? He's actually a very, very good teacher. So. Are you just saying yeah. that? No, he is a really good teacher. <laughs> Only joking. Yeah, yeah. He is. He is. He's really good at explaining things. You've done quite a bit now. I've seen a you catch a few dogs here and there. A little, you did demon. A bit. Yeah. No. Yeah. I enjoyed doing demon. You're gonna it's do really more. Forward. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Let's get this. Scott. And Garvey. But he doesn't even bite very hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I think it's good that you two work together. It's one of the things that we really liked when we came here. It's not I've seen some clubs where there's literally no females at all. No. It's literally just a man club. We do club. have a lot of females in the club actually. Phenomenally we do. Yeah. And are there any dogs on your wish list that you want to take bites from? Um, do you know what? I don't know. I've never really thought about that before. It's a good question, isn't it? I'd rather be on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I've done Garvey, I know that for a yeah. fact. I know People you've done Gorilla. People always to get me to do Gorilla, but it's never, never happened. I really, I really think you should. No. Well, I think I'm it's civil, but... It's nice having a significant other that you can work with. Yeah, definitely. It helps. It does help. Good. 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 One thing we really enjoy is obviously me and Andrea train, so it's not just her. This club is probably one of the few where there's a lot of women. Yes. A lot. Like yes. it's yes. almost yes. like yes. it's not it's always not, welcome. No, it's not a male dominated club. Yes. No. I know sometimes that can be a bit intimidating yes. for females. But we, we, we welcome anybody. Once you've got a sensible head on your shoulders and you're all about your dogs and training and it's you fine know, nice today, I'll tell you that for night. Progression of the <laughs> then yeah, definitely. You're more than welcome. Good lad. Helps uh, a lot. I think sometimes I think a lot of women want to get involved in the sport and the industry. There is sometimes that element of male domination in the, yes, in it yeah. where it puts people off. And actually, I think that now I'm going to get a bit of hate from the fellas, but I think women can sometimes be, and I think I've actually noticed it, better handlers. Yes, yes. And they I tend agree. to have. <laughs> Definitely. Because the dogs have a much clearer picture yeah. from early on, whereas we tend to be a little bit harder. A bit more harder on them. Yeah, the relationship. What do you look for from your dog while he's doing that? What um, kind of signs do you want to see? I, I just want him to. I just want him to bite. You know, I, I just want him to bite at the end of the day. Although this is mum, yeah. and mum feeds him, and mum looks after him. In a sinister way, I've told him to bite, so he yeah. should bite. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't fucking say it. I try not to. Don't say it. But he should bite. I've told him to bite, and he should bite. Yeah. That's bad. Whether it's mum or not, he should bite. You know. And that's all we want. Yeah. Mum will give him a bit of shit. There's constant pressure. There's little telltale signs. If you watch the video back, you'll see he's under constant stress. We just want him to bite. Yeah, she's just trying to make him uncomfortable. And like yeah. you said, I mentioned it earlier on with the puppies. We just want a clear understanding when it comes to bite work. When you are given the command to engage, engage regardless of what is going on or what's happening around you. Yeah, stay focused and bite. Yes, good boy. Yes. You know? Yes. After this, yeah. I can take him off and mum can give him a kiss or a cuddle. And right. How was that there. for you? Get me out of I'm nice. a celebrity, get yeah, me out of nice. here. <laughs> he was biting a hell of a lot harder than when I worked with the other day. I mean, he knew he was being filmed. <laughs> yeah, he was showing off. <laughs>